Good morning, class. Good morning. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School's the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Man, it is fun to overcome. Isn't it? It's a bummer to lose. <laughs> right? No, we just, we just don't do losing. We do overcoming. We do victory. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you might say, well, yeah, well, everybody would like that, but sometimes you can't always help it. No, you're, you're not listening. Uh, you can't control everything that happens around you and outside of you. You can control what comes inside of you, what happens inside of you. And even though there might be failures and issues and problems around you, that doesn't mean you've got to let failure inside you. You can affirm that greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world around you. In contrast to feelings and experiences, you keep affirming and saying, you know what the Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. Faith even calls those things that be not as though they were. When you feel the most like a failure is when you most need to affirm, I'm a victor. Right. Class, are y'all with me? Yes. When, when it most looks and feels like you're a failure and defeated, that's when it is of paramount importance that you resist those feelings. You resist that pressure, and you affirm and say, no, no, he always causes me to triumph. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer in him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Somebody say, I'm an overcomer. I'm, I'm more than a conqueror. He always causes me to triumph. He gives me the victory. Through my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm an overcomer. And if you always felt and looked like you were, you wouldn't have to believe it. <laughs> you wouldn't have to affirm it. Uh, get your Bible and get something to make a note with and come on into the classroom. Let's believe for precisely what we need to hear to quicken us being overcomers today. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. You have been so gracious to us. Uh, I'm confident you have and are helping us so much more than we have been aware of. You've spared us from so many things we didn't even know the enemy was trying to do. And you are our continual guide and help and strength. And we rest and rely and trust completely in you. Speak to us. Give us this day our daily bread and, and quicken us with our answers and help. And we'll thank you for it and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look with me please in Mark the fifth chapter. Continuing in our study of the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. We've been on this for some weeks now and we're taking our time because uh, uh, the same principles you will see again in, uh, we've seen it already in previous healing accounts, we'll see it in the following. Uh, but you, you never spent too much time and wasted time meditating in the Word of God. <laughs> you never spent too much time on a verse <laughs> or on a phrase or on a word because the scripture tells us that the Word of God is alive and it's quickening. And uh, it, it, uh, anything that's alive like this, you never see all of it.
Today, you'll see a shimmering side of it, and tomorrow, you'll see another side, and you go, wow, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's just another side <laughs> of the same thing, and you're always seeing uh, new facets of the same living truths, and it feeds you. It energizes you. It makes you strong, and faith, for, faith comes by hearing. Faith for healing comes by hearing about healing, and oh, man... There's some healing in these, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Are, are there healings in here? And I, amazing things happen. And the good news is the Lord is still doing the same today. He, he never changes. In Mark, the fifth chapter, I'm going to read this to you from the Woost translation. Verse 24, it says, There kept on following with him a large crowd, and they kept on pressing upon him almost to the point of suffocation. So this is a, a massive crowd and they are jam-packed, pushing and pressing. And a woman having come who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had endured much suffering under the hands of many doctors and had spent all of the things which she had and was not even one bit improved, but rather grew worse. So this was a long, arduous time, tough and hard time, uh, 12 years. You know, it's, it's good when you don't hurt, right? And it's wonderful freedom and liberty when you are not restricted by something. She was restricted. We talked about this earlier that under the law, if you had a hemorrhage like this, you were not supposed to be touching anybody or them touching you. And you were considered unclean. And man, what an effect that would have had on her life and anything she'd want to do and anywhere she'd want to go. And, and uh, as this translation brought out, she had spent all the things that she had. She must have been a person of some means because still after 12 years, it took her 12 years to run out. <laughs> Can you see that? And apparently she's selling things too. She's liquidating things and paying for procedures and treatments and, and physicians. And not one thing helped her at all. She is uh, not one bit better, but had actually grown worse. Now we talked about this previous days, how that it is honorable that she fought because after six months, after a year, after two, after five, uh, people get tired and they quit. Some commit suicide. Others just give up and don't try anymore. And, and that is faithlessness. That is despair. This is all she knew. She hadn't heard about Jesus uh, these 12 years prior. She didn't know there was anything else that she was aware of. Uh, so she's fighting it the only way she knows how. And she's, she didn't quit. Somebody say she didn't quit. She didn't quit. What if she'd quit and given up and died six years before? Well, this story wouldn't be in the Bible, right? Right? She kept fighting and stayed alive long enough to find out about Jesus. Can you see that, class? That, see, every, everything the Scripture tells us is significant. Why would it tell us about the 12 years? Why would it tell us about how hard it was? Why would it tell us about the lengths she went to? Well, numerous reasons. One is that there are things that human beings just can't fix. Right? Is it still that way today? Oh, dear me. I mean, you don't have to go very far until the latest, greatest advances won't help you. And we're working on something, and maybe one day we'll have it, but it'll be too late for you. Yet, she didn't give up. She didn't quit. The Bible said, through faith and patience, you inherit the promises. That word patience can be translated perseverance. Uh, we, we call it stick to <laughs> right? You just, you, you just, you know, did you think she got up every morning uh, feeling like fighting? 
feeling like, huh? And after the, the 15th proce- painful procedure and somebody's got a new idea that they'll try on you, it's going to be hard, but we'll try it. No, you can get discouraged. You can get fed up. You can say, no, I'm done. And you're right. You're done. Right? Because when you quit, you know what's going to happen. You give up. You're defeated. That's it. It's over. You know, I'm thinking about the account in the Bible that um, uh, God's people were shut up in a city besieged by the enemy for months and months and months until they were starving on the inside. And there were some leprous men that were outside the gate because of the same deal. They were unclean. They weren't supposed to be anybody. And they're starving. And finally, one of them said, hey, why just sit here and die? <laughs> let's, let's go over towards the enemy camp. They probably got food over there. And if they kill us, We'll just be dead. We're going to be dead here pretty soon anyway. But they might give us something to eat. And God used them getting up. And when they started toward the camp, he caused the enemy to hear a a sound of a big host. And I guess the angels made noise. And and it scared them all away. And and they just went from tent to tent and ate till they couldn't hold anymore. (laughs) And they said, "We, we better tell somebody else about all this food here. But... What is, did you hear that phrase? Why sit here and die? Why do you sit here and give up and quit and die? This works the same in a financial situation. If your finances are such, and, and maybe you're the one that messed them up, but, the, but you're in such a mess, you don't see how you could work five jobs for the next 50 years and make a dent in it. How could you fix it? Well, maybe you can't. But we know somebody who can. I said, we know somebody who can. If you give up, if you quit, if you put a shotgun to your head, drive your car off a cliff, well, that's it. There's no opportunity for some miracle happening then. But if you will give God an opportunity, give him some time. Come on, can you see that? Give him some time and opportunity to work with you and show you what to do and show you the next step and show you the next step. It's amazing how quickly things can turn around when you quit crying and feeling sorry for yourself, when you quit being a victim and you start having some faith. You just... uh, Somebody needs to stand up right now from where you are. You've been crying, 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 crying. Quit crying. Why? Class, do it by faith. Wipe away the tears from your eyes and say, I am not a failure. I am not a, failure. I am not a victim. I am not a victim. I'm, not defeated. I'm not defeated. I'm a child of God. Child of God. And, I'm an and I'm an overcomer. And He always, and he always, always, always causes me to triumph. Causes me to triumph. He always. always. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, say, Lord. I'm not quitting. I'm trusting you. I'm holding on to you. I'm looking to you. And I know you'll bring me out. You'll bring me through this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Didn't the scriptures tell you that God, he'll make a way of escape. He'll make a way out. He'll always do it. And that's understanding. If you give him this faith that we're talking about, what we just got through doing, give him something To work with. So uh, it is uh, an honorable thing to see the courage of this woman. She's a fighter. Can you see that? She's a fighter. Didn't the Bible say in 1 Timothy 6.12? 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life where until you're called. Lay hold. Fight the good fight of faith. Faith is a fighter. I've had opportunity to minister to people in the area of healing uh, extensively for years, especially in times past. And um, I have seen people that were given up to die by the best doctors of the day and nothing could help you, nothing could change. I've seen people who uh, just, there was, there was no hope. And I have also seen those same people, I'm thinking of 
uh, of three right now that should have been dead 30 years ago, <laughs> 20 years ago, one of them 40 years ago, should have been dead, should have been dead. Doctors told them they wouldn't live out the year. <laughs> that was 40 years ago. <laughs> but every one of these had the same quality about them. They're fighters. I said, they're fighters. Yes. They're fighters. They would get up every day and they might feel so bad and they might hurt so bad and they may look so bad, but they would, would say they're going to live and not die young and wrong. They would say, you know, I call my body healed and, and whole. They, they would push and say and declare and decree every one of them are fighters. These ones I'm talking about, they're still alive and even healthy after all these years and decades. Fighters. Are you a fighter? Yes. Or a quitter? Huh? How many quitters are in the class? Don't raise your hand. Don't you raise your hand. This is faith school. Huh? No quitters allowed in faith school. This is a no quitter club. This is an all winner. Especially with your prejudice. Yeah, against quitters. No quitters allowed. All winners. Huh, is that right? Somebody say all winners. All, in fact, all winners all the time. All winners all the time. Didn't he say he always? Always causes, 2 Corinthians 2.14, he always causes us to triumph. That's all winners all the time. That's me. That's you. Got nothing to do with how you feel. Got nothing to do with how you look or what you've experienced in the past. This is what faith is all about. Faith is the substance of things expected. It's the, the evidence of things not seen, things invisible. Calling those things that be not as though they were. Let the weak say, I am strong. I'm strong. And the people say, well, you don't look very strong. I didn't say I look strong. I said, I am strong. <laughs> is that right? You don't look like you feel strong. I didn't say I feel strong. I'm calling it that way because it needs to change. And invisible things change visible things. Praise God. Oh, somebody say praise God. It says, when she heard the things concerning Jesus, she came in the crowd behind and touched his garment. For she kept saying, if I touch even his garments, I shall be made whole. And immediately there was dried up the fountain of her blood and she suddenly came to feel in her body that she had been healed of her plague and was at that moment in a state of health. That's the worst translation. How many believe this actually happened? Did, did this actually happen? It happened. Is it possible that you can be sick for a decade and just miserable in terrible condition and as fast as you can blink your eyes. <laughs> Unseen power, energy, come into your body and correct a, a, a tear, correct a, an organ malfunction, correct a diseased body part, uh, restore, recreate something. I mean... Even unbelievers who study physics believe that energy can change matter. There's evidence of it everywhere. Unseen. There's even this big thing about that, that, that we've discovered that uh, uh, empty space is not just empty. All that stuff out there, it's, it's energy <laughs> and matter. What kind? We don't know what to call it, so you can't see it. What do we call it? Dark? What does that mean? Can't see it. But it's there. Really. <laughs> That's what the Bible's been saying all along. That the things that are seen are created out of things you can't see. Isn't that what the Bible said? The worlds were framed and made. Not out of nothing. God didn't make it out of nothing. He made it out of something you can't see. But the unseen force created the seen material realm. So it shouldn't be a thing 
uh, thought shocking that the same force that created matter could alter matter, could change matter, which is precisely what happened when that anointing flowed out of Jesus uh, from his clothes into her. Hallelujah. And in a moment of time, what all the procedures and all the medicine in the world and all the other stuff in the world and all the money couldn't fix, just like that. She, she felt it when it happened. Oh, hallelujah. She, she knew it. And she's like, oh, glory to God. And it happened exactly how she said it would and when she said it would, when she touched, when she touched his clothes. Immediately, Jesus, having had a personal or clear knowledge in himself of the experience of power going out of him, having turned around in the crowd, was saying, who touched me on my garments? See, that Wu says it like that. It's accurate. Who touched me on my garments? He knew exactly how it happened. He knew exactly when it happened. Because he was aware of it. And his disciples kept on saying to him, You are seeing the crowd pressing hard around you from all sides, yet you are saying, Who touched me? And he kept on looking round about to see the woman that had done this. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what that which had been done for her, came and fell before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. We talked about this earlier in our study on healing. The word sozo, that same word translated save is translated healed. Same word. Uh, I've had people try to take me to task and say, well, we, we don't preach all that healing stuff. We just preach salvation. Same word. <laughs> I said it's the same word. Because when you say, the Lord saved me, you said a big statement. Because saved you from what? Huh? He saved you from hell. He saved you from judgment. He saved you from spiritual death. But that's not all he saved you from. Huh? This woman was saved from, the, from being sick, from this hemorrhage, from, from spending all her money, from not being able to do things. She, was she saved from a restricted lifestyle? Was she saved from pain and debility? Is that being saved too? Oh, she was saved. And how about not having to pay all those giant doctor bills? Right? So her finance, what was left of her finances was saved. Can you see that? That was saved. And now she can build back up. But she was saved uh, physically and saved emotionally and saved materially and saved financially. Somebody say, I'm saved. I'm saved. The, Lord saved the Lord has saved me. He has saved me. Oh, I like saying that. You like saying that? The Lord has saved me. Hallelujah. And you can see in this woman's... Uh, what happened with her, five specific things that she did that led to her salvation, led to her being saved. The first one is she heard about Jesus. Can, can you see this? Whether somebody needs to be saved and born again, or they need to be saved from disease or whatever, is that the first step with any of us, yeah. right? You, you got to hear there's a Savior, yeah. right? You got to hear what he can do what he has done for others. You got to hear what he will do for you. You got to hear that it's his will to do it for you. You got to hear about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. And then secondly, she said it. <laughs> uh, and the Bible says, in fact, just, just take a moment and turn there. Second Corinthians 4, 13, talking about the spirit of faith. It says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Is this believing and saying just for this woman with the issue of blood? Certainly not. It's how you got born again, or how you can get born again if you, if you haven't been. It's how you also get healed. It's how you get delivered. It's how you get protected. It's how the just live. The just shall live by faith. And the spirit of faith is believing in your heart and saying with your mouth, I believe, therefore have spoken. How did she get her faith? She heard about Jesus. 
And then what did she do? She obviously believed it. How can we tell? She said it. Right? She said, I, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but she's saying, man, all that healing I've been hearing about down at those meetings with Jesus, I believe every word of it. I've met people who've been healed. I know it's true. And I just know if I can get to him and touch his clothes, I'll be healed too. I just watch. I will be healed. I shall be whole. I shall be made whole. She said it. She said it because she believed it. Then, number three, she did it. Right? She followed through with her confession. And she pushed and she pressed. You think she felt like pushing through that massive crowd? I mean, she's been through all these procedures. She's uh, hemorrhaging, losing blood, and just weakened condition. But she pushed and she pressed and she pushed and she slipped and she scooted and she slid and she went up and she went down and she wouldn't quit. And she touched and she received it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the last thing she did, the fifth thing she did, is that she uh, told everybody. <laughs> Come on, can you see that? She testified and told everybody what Jesus did for her. In fact, you'll see that she started something that after this, you see numbers of people wanting to touch the hem of his garment. <laughs> Masses of people wanting to do that. Why? Word got around about what happened to her. Just like she heard other people got healed, people heard she got healed, and they wanted to do the same thing. And the same thing happened for, I don't know how many people, uh, at least hundreds, probably thousands. I'm talking about touching, people just touching the clothes, just touching the, the hem. You know, the Bible said uh, concerning Peter in the book of Acts, God did special miracles by the hands of Paul. He also did miracles by the shadow of Peter. You remember that? Uh, I mean, Peter would just get close to people and his shadow, well, what's a shadow? I mean, uh, you know, but that close proximity, something happened. The anointing would go into him and it, it talked, as many as his shadow came across, they were all healed. They were all healed. Is that just for us to ooh and ah at back uh, looking at what happened then and go, man, wouldn't it have been great to live back there? No, God's still alive today. He's real right now. His spirit is here. The same spirit that was on him actually lives inside of you. Hallelujah. And if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, he will also quicken and make full of life your mortal body. Somebody say, I receive the healing power of God, the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. I receive it now. It's working in me now. Thank you, Lord. For saving me. Hallelujah. That's our time for today. We'll see you soon here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941 Seven zero two seven three nine zero. 